Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to EclipseCon and welcome to this hands-on and tutorial about Sirius. We are very proud uh, to see that we have to change of room because the other was full. There was too much people, so thank you to, to be here. Um, today it will be a real cha challenge uh, because uh, it will not be a classical tutorial. Uh, we will let you to do the kind of designer that you want. So we can have one different kind of use cases of serious per person here in this room. So it will be really change. You will see that we are plenty of uh, OBO person here in the room and several partners. We will help, help us to give you some support during um, this, this hands-on. So I'm Etienne Julio. I'm one of the founder of uh, OBO. And um, today, to do the doing, I will present in uh, 15 minutes uh, f the first step to create your own designers. I suggest that you start to install the bundle, the dead site. So there is, there are here. No, they, there isn't anymore. Some USB K. If you already use it, please bring bring them back for other. Um, if you use Mac or Linux, this is this one. The other are with Windows. And uh, we have tweet, and you should have received an email with the URL if you want to download by yourself the last version. And my last slide will be a reminder of the good URL. Sorry? This one. So, let's start. Um, this talk is not about serious, what is the purpose, how does it work, etc. It's really a tutorial, so I will go very quickly in the purpose of Sirius. Uh, the main objective of Sirius is to create specific designers and to help you to reduce uh, the complexity of creating your own uh, designers. And by create specific designers, the objective is to have something as easy as PowerPoint, or as easy as Visio, but with all the power of model and EMF models underlying. And um, it will be also very easy and interoperable with all other nice technology proposed by uh, Eclipse, like Xtext, like uh, Code Generator, etc. Et um, so the tutorial objective will be to create um, uh, really very simple designers to show a um, geneal genealogy, a family graph, with a man, with woman, um, and uh, it's something very easy that everybody can understand. And after my first it iterations, you can create your own meta models. And if you want to, if you already have an idea of what you want to represent, a component. A component diagram, I don't know, any, any kind of use case, you, you can use the left part, which is another project contributed for Luna inside Eclipse, which is Ecor Tools 2, with uh, Cedric Brun, who is the leader of the project. And this project, Ecor Tools 2, is based on Sirius 2. So it will be also a nice use case of the technologies. How does it work in a, only one slide? For the toolmakers, uh, you have to define your language, your vocabulary. So for this, we use EMF, and we use Ecore Tools 2 to have a graphical representation of, EML, of uh, EMF. Ooh, sorry. This is your domains. And after, you will have, with EMF for free, um, three uh, editors which is conform to your domains. With the K, you have already an example of a family, because it's just not very interesting to create by yourself a, a family. Um, and this is today the, what Eclipse already proposed with Kepler and um, previous uh, versions. With Sirius, you have two parts also. Uh, one part is for toolmaker only, uh, which is a configuration editors 
to say that how a man will be represented. Is it just a box? Is it, um, is it an icon? Is it what you want? A container? And you do this configuration without code, any Java code, without create uh, to, know, to need to know the Eclipse API, the MF API. Everything is simple. And you will have the graphical designers for the end users. So the end users just see the bottom of this, uh, of this uh, slide. They never see the configuration uh, that, you will, um, that you will manipulate today. And what you, you see graphically is exactly the same as the data. If you change the data, it will be uh, refreshed in the graphical port. That's uh, in this kind of way that we succeed to be compatible with other editors like Xtext. So the family dot equals the example dot um, basic family are downloadable on the uh, on the web and on the um, key, and the, we will create together the the dot o design, which will be the file with the configuration of the designers, and all the graphical informations the, um, to know the where is it placed on the diagram, the size, etc. I store in another file, which is .reiard. It's enough for the quick overview. So here you have some, so the, li the link uh, to have all the, all, all the things you have. Does everybody have uh, the information to download? If not, just ask all the, uh, the person which are around you. So let's start the tutorial. Is, is So here we are in the first eclipse. In this first eclipse, we define the, um, the domain models. As you can see, so I use um, equal tools with uh, lots of different features to create to create classes like this. You know, with detection, if I create a space, it will correct by itself. Your validation, etc., etc. Um, and after this, I will launch, I go very quickly on this part. I will launch a configuration file. As, as we, you have really the last version of the Eclipse Luna, it will be the official final release. We do this bundle very quickly this week. So we have a little problems. So please just change here the locations to create a new uh, works, work pay, workspace uh, because uh, you, you can see some problem of compilation. If you have this kind of problem of compilation of your plugins, please change just here and it will work. So you launch another Eclipse. Just listen to me now. You, you will have all the time to, to redo by yourself. You have the um, paper which explains step by step what I, I will present you. So here, I already created a project with just the example of uh, my, my family. And I am inside the serious perspective and I will create here a new viewpoint specification project. This is the name of the project to define your workbenches. I will use a name like this one. Ooh. and a name for the, for the file. It will generate a project, which is um, a, a real Eclipse plugins. So it's very easy to deploy if you want to deploy it uh, like an update site or to be in, include inside the build. But for you, the user, you don't need to deploy to test it. It will be runtime interpreted. So here I am in this file uh, where I will start to define my designers. First, I will try to say what is a viewpoint. A viewpoint is a set of designers. So it's, uh, you can have one viewpoint per uh, category of users or per kind of activity. 
So if you are just, uh, I don't know, uh, developers, you don't want to have uh, the, some uh, management uh, designers. You don't want to be employed by too many designers. So you, you do some set of, uh, set of designers. Let's do this one. Uh, let's call it uh, person hands-on demo, I don't know, something like this. It will be activated only for some extension file. Here I use dot basic family, so I write it. And inside this viewpoint, so I can create several representations. So some diagrams, I will do this one now. But you can also do some uh, edition table like Excel, a cross table for matrix and uh, impact analysis, tree, sequence diagram, anything you want. Let's do this one. I'll create it um, flat person map, something like this. This is the name. Domain classes here, I have access at, to all the EMF models of my current Eclipse, so I have completions. I will say that I will activate these diagrams for each family in my models. I have only one, so I will have only one diagrams. But, as you can see here, I have too many information, it's, the completion is quite long, so I will restrict and to say that I want to work only on one meta models. So I say that I work only on basic family. So I register here in the meta, meta models property. And now if I redo the completions, I have only the completion of family. I continue, I can create some operations, some layout, some filter, etc. Let's do the graphical part. Each graphical shape is created inside a layer. Uh, so it's like in GIMP or Photoshop, you can have several layers. And it's easier to, um, to, to let the user choose which kind of information he wants to show. So let's create a default layer. And inside I will create a, a node for each woman. Let's start by the woman. Woman. So here, in green, this is how I use, uh, I will go to find the right information. If you want to use another model, it's the only way, only part that you have to change to say that, for example, I want to, uh, to do um, uh, a graphical view on a UML model, for example. You just have to change here and it, you know, if it will work. Oh. So let's do. Come back with Roman, and here it's the request part. We say how I can um, go to family to uh, my woman, and I have a future a direct feature which is member. Last thing is just to sh to show to select the style, the graphical style. Style. I will use a square, and it's enough. Just I will test it now. So I come back on my project. On the project itself, I will select viewpoint selections to ask to activate all the diagrams for this kind of viewpoint. When you start, nothing occurs. It's normal. And I have to go to family. And now on family, I have a new kind of diagrams. OK, as you can see, it works. Up. Now, I do you, uh, give you this advice, try to split your workbench with these two parts to so uh, in life the result of what you do. And for example, if you want to change here and to say that the color is light blue, it will change in life as soon as you save. Um, let's do now the same for the man. Here, man. Man, here I can still use future, future, so when you have the completion, you have several kind of things that you can use for the query. Um, future, which is a direct future in your models, but you can also use a query for complex filter or complex query. Uh, it's used the Excel 3 syntax, and so you can do a lot of things comp more complex. In this example, we do exactly the same. 
Um, of course, if you use this one, it's, it will not be as performant as this one, because here it's just directly the MF model that you query. But you can do more power, uh, powerful uh, query. And for the style, this one, I will use a workspace image. Uh, you have this kind of image already inside the, your zip file. And I will reuse the, the URL the URI to say that workspace image is this one. I save, oh, I have it. Oh, it's wrong because I don't want to show the icon. Save, I don't want any more the icon here. Okay. And last, I will try to, not last, okay, two, two more steps. Uh, I will try to do an, uh, some edge. Uh, to show the, um, the fa father or mother relationship uh, between the person. Uh, let's say that it will be a father. It can start from, the age can start from man and woman. There will be the children. And the target can only be a man. And this time the query is Father. I save, up. Okay, we see the uh, uh, start of tree. I will not do the same for, for, um, for mother. You can imagine that it's exactly the same. Um, you can uh, also add, um, you will see, uh, let's try for example, a conditional style to say that a man, um, if, if it doesn't have any children, the shape will change, the style will change, sorry. For example, children dot, mm, sorry, size, keep. There, and this one, I will do, let's do a, a still a square. Okay, so you have something where, where the graphical part change depending on the result of a, a kind of validation of a, a kind of a, a condition. And the last one is to create uh, some tools because today everything is just uh, read-only. I cannot create any, any, anything new. So I will create, a, I will define also the toolbar and all the actions. I come back inside under my layer and under my layer, I can create a new tool sections. Um, creation, let's say. And I will, so here you can create some complex tools like um, double click. What you have to do when you double click is it just uh, I don't know to to change the statue of, on your object, or do you want to zoom in? Do you want to show property? I don't know. Uh, you can define the copy past inside the designer or from anywhere from Eclipse uh, to, uh, to the current designer. You can define the, the behavior of the reco reconnect edge when you change the edge uh, somewhere. But now we just create, do uh, classical um, element creations. And it's a node. Um, I will tr allow to create man. A new man. If I save, you see here, there is already a new man with a good icon which occurs, but it will not do anything. And I will create now an operation which will be create, create instance. The reference, it's uh, where I will store it uh, in my models. And what will be the kind of e classes I want to create, man. If I try, if I go in other man, it just doesn't work because it reacts to my meta model's constraint. If I click here, jump. I think I forgot to go to the the good context, change context. Here will be containers. Oh, 
Ok. Save. Oh. Red members. Sorry. I clips in front, so I write in French. Okay, so it works. And for example, it's quite bad because uh, you have nothing, you are just a box, you don't know what it, what it is. So I can create, for example, the name automatically. So after I create this element, I can say, let's set automatically the name. And the name will be, oh, I'll reuse the query. It's more complex than the others. So let's say man this container container will be the container of the of, of any person so the family. I go I will go to the collection of members and find how many to filter just the man. Say that. Filter man, and I say it adds the size. With this, you will see the result. Check. It's great. Mine eight, mine ten, etc., etc., etc. So this is the kind of behavior, more complex behavior that I can do. You can also reference Java code. It's very easy. You just have to create plain, plain Java code just in your project. And uh, you can also, during this tutorial, create table, tab create tree. Um, I, I or, or only create, uh, in this very quick tutorials, nodes, but you can also create containers. So containers are elements you can, create, you can store other inside, uh, inside, inside there. Inside containers, you can create port, port border, what we call bordered node. Etc. 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 So now, so it's over for me. Uh, I'll propose for you to start, so you can start to redo this tutorial by yourself, and we'll help you. Or uh, again, you can uh, just imagine, perhaps in the first step on the paper, uh, a kind of use case that you can have in your daily work. Um, and uh, create your meta models and create these designers. And we promise you that before the end of this hands-on, it will work. So good luck to everybody. Thank you. I will show you something different for those who want. Here, I have created containers with uh, for a man, like before, and I will create inside these containers. Uh, some element which will be contained inside the inside the man. So let's try and say that ch child. Say that I will show every person. Say that the future here is chil children. And say that the style is a. Um, a square. Check. So I have my children directly inside under each element. I can change here on my containers to just say that the children representations could be a list. Check. With just with just one checkbox, I have to do the change. Now I will show you also the some person asked me about the arrangement the ar uh, arrange layouting. Uh, let's go in this one. If I do the rearrangement here, you can see that everything moves. But if I move by hand this one, you will see that if I reapply the arrangement, it will not move anymore. So that's a pin function func feature. You say that if you have moved by yourself this element, it's for good reasons. So you, it, for the next arrangement, all the other will move, but not this one. If you see, that you can uh, so unpin any kind of element. So I unpin 
this box, and it's, now it's continue to move. I can pin several one, pin, layouting, chalk, and I can here view which one are pin or not. So it could be very, very useful to manage the good layouting. Yep. You, you have also a future to be sure that inside your configuration file, everything is validate. You have here um, button validate models. So it's validate from my ca case, but if I write something wrong here, when I click on validate, oops, I have to save. You say, okay, there is the problems. This, this feature doesn't work. And you, uh, oh, each query is, uh, can be validated to be sure that you don't do something wrong. Doop. I will try also now to do a table. We, we just, oh no, just before. Um, I did uh, some man here. I will just very quickly do still uh, um, woman. Very, very quickly. Check. Woman again. <coughs> okay. Okay, I have my woman, but I can create a new layer, additional layer, say woman only, and after just drag and drop any element inside this layer. So when I save all my example, it disappears, and you can see all the layer here in this checkbox. After I will explain you how to do a table. Wait a little. Wait a little. Here I will some, show you something new. I want to create a new designer, but uh, on the context of one person to show all the children of the current person I select. So I will have as many uh, diagrams as any persons. So I have created. A new, um, a new diagram. This time it's, it will be on the context of another uh, person. I want to show the current person which is concerned by these diagrams, but I don't want to re specify the node, the style, the mapping as uh, already done. So I will create here an import. So I will import, to create a node import. I will have a new, a new category here in my properties and say that I will reuse the woman descriptions. So automatically the domain class occurs and say um, current woman. Yep, woman. Here I just say that I don't want to go inside uh, under my element, but I just want to stay on the, cell, the same that my containers, so my diagrams, and say self, and I don't describe the style, because as it's, it is an import, every style, every condition will be import for my first diagrams. And if I go here, for example, for Lea, or let's try with Isa, I have so my new contextual children. Oh wait, it's just bad to have just uh, this kind of name uh, for diagrams. I will also change the name, the title per default of my diagrams. For example, here I will say that it is the name of the person plus uh, context. Check. 
And now when I go here, I have isa context. And as you can see, oops, I go there. I find exactly the same um, the, the same style than before. If I change in my first diagrams something like remove the icons, I save. It will change here, but it will change also here. So you define only one time a kind of shape, and you can reuse across different. Um, different diagrams. So I continue here to show children's. This time it's not self, but it will be. Future children. Check. And I have my children here, Leah, which is a children. After I can create also the the age um, between the between the two etc so this this kind of um, of uh, import is very very useful when you do complex diagrams several diagrams and you don't want to to recreate each time something existing Let's do with men here future children Chuck. oops and the, shil the children of Isa appears without any information in the style. You can also have some future that uh, you, you, you just try to go inside the different boxes that can s you can see here, for example, on the diagrams, you can enable pop-up. And when you enable pop-up, if I just go here, I will have a, a classical GMF um, a GMF uh, shortcut to help you to, to create new elements directly inside the diagrams. Or you can um, do lots of them. So I promise you to create a table. Let's do it. So the table is another representation. Let's say that it will be person details, the name. It will still be a um, basic family family. And let's do again the restriction of the good meta models. Check. Okay. So with this table, I can create so the column and the line. So first, let's do the line. It's like a diagram, the configuration. So I can say that it will be my person. Domain class will be person. The, the query is simple, it's just members. And if I, I will just test it now. Now I have a second representation here, person details. I go and I see all my person. Nope. It's, for, it's, it's still uh, interpreted, interpreted in live. I can create a new column. Let's say, for example, um, it will be number of children. And, um, um, no, let's, say, let's start by name. Just name, simple. The future will be name. Save. Yep. You can do a label here to say this is a name. Yep. Okay, let's do an, another another future column. And with um, this this time Oh, let's say it further. Check further. And as you can see, here, this is an element, and you can modify directly here. So it's not just show, it can be semantic. You can have lots of different things here. And for, for the number of elements of children, 
Penbit children. Let's see. Should be children, future name. And this time the label will be uh, children size. So I say this. And I can also, as in diagrams, create conditional style, for example, to say that if the number of children, children, uh, yep. size is more than one, the star, the color will be red. Yep. And so you see very quickly the result. And of course, if I change um, some element here in these representations, it will change in the other representation. For example, the further of the, um, what can I change? Alan, where is Alan? If, if, if I change here the father of, of Alan to be Albert, check, you will be, see in live the, the change in the other diagrams. And you don't have to code anything, it just works. Let's, con let's continue. If you want, you can try this kind of, for, of new representation. Inside this one, I will create some sub-element for each, uh, each ch children. Children. Context. Up. Of course, I want to have something which is uh, recursive. So I can create under um, child. I'm not sure I will. I hope I will not do a mistake. So. Uh, how does it work? Um, I think I have to create a new three items. Just, uh, children and say that I import child still for person it's not this one it's children check yeah it worked I'm not so stupid. So now I have a recursive uh, tree. As you can see, it's quite easy to, to have. So just uh, as you have perhaps seen at the beginning, I create on initializations. This is when you create a new model, so you have something which is great. For example, let's say that here, oh, I have to create a tool. Oh. Right, a second. I will create I've got a tool to create a man. Deep. I will create a new man, you will see. Check. And um, oh no, okay. As you can see, there is an help, a contextual help on each element that I have to read uh, more often. <laughs> 
And uh, this future, this future helps you to create automatically a diagrams when you start the sessions. So the session is when you open a new project, uh, an existing project, you start your your Eclipse, etc. So it will create automatically um, th this tree for each person they can find in the project. So it can be an issue about performance, but it can be useful for some kind of uses. For example, on this one, I can say that automatically you can create it, and automatically it will be sh show at the startup. So if I close my Eclipse, this one I will. I close everything. Shoop. I will close this project and just hello close project to be sure. Uh, this is this one. I reopen. Up. Oh, have you have see? These diagrams were show at startup automatically. So it can be useful if it's an overview diagram, something like this. And if I go here, yeah, I can continue to work uh, with this. And if, if this project, this diagrams was not created, like this one, try to close, yep, I reopen, it will be recreated automatically. A nice feature that you can use to, to continue to do their future, your, uh, your um, own designers is this one. Go inside the, your, the result of the diagrams, click everywhere, and you have open definitions. And automatically it will open the good O design focus on the good, the good parts which uh, corresponding to what you select. It's very useful when you want to quickly See, what is this shape? I don't understand. <laughs> so. uh, something also useful to help you to navigate inside your diagrams. Do you control O? And you have a quick, uh, quick search. Say Clara, Clara. Clara. Check. It's focused on Clara here. A lot of this kind of features everywhere in the tool. And this one. You can use it, snap to shape. So after, you will have this kind of feature. Quite useful. I remember, I have another point I would like to show you is how to navigate from one designer to another one. Here, I would like to go from any, any person and be able to create a new, um, a new contextual diagrams to show all the our children. Okay. So I go to my configuration. Yep. I will create here a new tool inside the tool uh, the tool sections, which will be a navigation tool. So I can go from, I will create a uh, diagram navigation to say that I want to go to diagrams. I can select the target diagrams, should be contextual children. I can say that I can activate this navigation for only, let's say, man. Yep. No, man. And say, um, go to my children. And it's enough. I click. And now, if I go, go back to my designers, I have nothing. <laughs> what?
Oh, no. I use a bad one. It's diagram creation. Sorry. The other is for more complex. It's for more complex behaviors. My children. Yep. And here, so forget the, the first step of my demo. It was it was not diagram creation. It's these tools, new representation creations. Because the diagram question is only to navigate if you already have an existing diagram. But if you want to create, uh, to allow the user to create a new one, it's this one. So I, I can now create directly and navigate. So you can really control what you want to do when you navigate. You have still here all the kind of um, of. Uh, Operation that you can do in your models. So you can, uh, when your user wants to navigate, you can, for example, um, rename the name of the person. You can move it somewhere else in your model. You can do what you what you want. So it's very useful. And now I will also create a more complex tools which will be to help you to create, um, to select uh, your children. So I will create here um, a pan selection wizard, which is a, se a, a wizard. Let's call it children. Inside the, this candidate expression, it will be what will be show um, proposed in the wizard to be selected. You say children. Let's try. I have children here. I click on Fiona. We have this kind of, the, the goal is to have this kind of result. So you can select the children of Fiona directly. Oh, I know. I do mistake here. It's not the children of the person. It's the containers that member. So I want to show all the person. So if I go to Fiona. Okay, so it, it works. Thank you. Thank you, Maxime. So I did a mistake because containers is a graphical containers when I put my element. And, and I, so E containers is how in EMF you go back from the current element you click on on and you go up. So if I click on Fiona here, here the e-container is family. So I want to show all the members of my family, check, which is on the left here. And after I can select this. Of course, I can do a tools after to say that for each person it it will become the child the child of the current person. It's here, you just understand that you can do some more complex wizard without the need to code anything. Here, something, another tool is if, if I want to just select Fiona and write something on the keyboard and rename the name, I can create a new direct edit label. I say that it will be for man and woman. Sorry, man and woman and say. Rename. And when I do this, I, I will say that I will set the name with a value expression which is arc zero. So if, if now I change something, it rename the name of the person. 
But you can have something more complex. For example, you can say that if it's this one and uh, this one with a, a two, two points, uh, the tool will automatically detect, parse, parse these expressions to help you to, to define the good, the, the good element. I will show you this kind of, uh, of uh, change. For example, here, if I change member by uh, my member, oops, it will work. But if I just say two, it doesn't work. If I say, how does it work? One, one, for example, oh, oh. So, to have to see this kind of advanced future of your models, I propose to you to go to another talk, which will be tomorrow by Cedric Brun, around these designers, which has been very deeply customized with lots of future like uh, direct edit, like uh, reconnect, like uh, everything. Cedric will explain how, uh, uh, how is the result and how he creates this, this kind of really complex and professional designers. And uh, you can show, we can show also some lots of different use cases of this technology because it's a technology which is already deployed in industrial uh, customers at a very large scale for the last uh, six years. It was a commercial product before, so it's, it's something new inside the Eclipse Foundation ecosystems, but it's something which is already uh, reliable. You have several persons here and other booths which, which already use it and uh, do professional product with this. And uh, say, I hope that you enjoy these tutorials. We take the challenge to let you to create by yourself. I hope uh, it was a success for, for most of you. And so welcome in the Serious uh, community. And uh, enjoy your day. Thank you.